I was in an automobile accident in 09, and it broken my neck. It been four places. I had a 10 level fusion in my neck, and I was having trouble with my esophagus. And so they had operated on my esophagus. I went in and had a, a test done to um, prepare for another surgery, and that's when they found cancer. They said that they had to do what they call a laryngectomy, which is they have to go in and remove my voice box. And so two weeks later, I had a laryngectomy. I was cleaning my, um, my um, DEP, which is my prosthesis, inside my throat, and um, was putting my Larry tube back in, and it kind of got jammed, and I kind of just forced it forced it down, and when I did that, it apparently caught on the lip of my TEP, and it pulled it out and shoved it down into my lung, and I couldn't breathe. Like, panicked. Um, it's the first time that I had had an experience like that. Um, I ran into my daughter's room in the middle of the night. It was pretty, actually, horrific. Um, she kind of, like, kicked in my door, and she couldn't breathe, so I, in turn, that was our first emergency with uh, her laryngectomy. So I was in a whirlwind. I didn't know what to do. Um, called 911, and it was just very frantic. They weren't sure what to do. They apparently had never had a laryngectomy patient before. We wear a wrist bracelet that says we're neck breathers because we don't breathe at all through our nose and our mouth anymore. And I kept trying to show it to him, and he kept taking my arm and shoving it away. And they were trying to put a mask over my nose and my mouth. And I was pointing it to my hole. You can see it. And um, I couldn't communicate to him what to do. And he didn't know what to do. I don't honestly remember too much after that. I passed out from because I wasn't breathing. And um, I had actually flatlined. So I don't remember much more until we got here. When we evaluated her, I could see that she was having trouble breathing. Her oxygen levels were not uh, as high as they should be. So I took a look at the chest x-ray, and I was able to identify that there was something a little bit different in one of the pathways to her lungs. And we could identify a little uh, disc-like structure there, which was consistent with a prosthesis. So with that in mind, we knew immediately that we're worried about a foreign body. Uh, once I saw her, I knew immediately that she had had a laryngectomy, and so I was able to inform the rest of the team, or healthcare team, that they should not be trying to put a breathing tube through her mouth and if she needed any extra oxygen that it should go through the neck. Pretty quickly afterwards we were able to get the pulmonologist involved and they were able to use a, a pretty nifty tool to actually freeze something onto that disc and pull that out within a couple of minutes. Her airway was open, her oxygen levels was restored pretty quickly and we were able to, to, to save her from a pretty emergent situation. Thank God that he was there because even regular emergency doctors aren't for sure on how to treat a laryngectomy when they're not breathing. And it's by no fault of anybody's. It's just we're not gone. And so they aren't trained in taking care of us because it isn't common. Health wise, I'm doing really good. And I'm talking, I have my TBB put back in. A lot of people questioned whether or not I was gonna take a chance again of putting it in and it's something happening. But my ability to communicate with my family and my grandchildren was far more important to me than fear. It's hard to be like this and it's, but you can't live in fear. All you can do is hope that you have enough things in place to protect you if something happens. I have pictures on my wall in my bedroom that show my stoma and how to administer CPR to me, because you don't do it the same way, obviously. I believe that first responders, paramedics, and even ER personnel should know how to administer um, CPR to someone in our condition. Every day, I thank God that, that they were able to save me. I thank the doctors and the nurses in the ER. Everybody got right on board once they knew what to do. Everybody was a team and worked together to save my life.
So if I can save one person from having to go through it, it was all worth it.